Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is. Welcome to episode 31 of Very Fun Adventures. My name is Tanya and I'm coming to you from Southeast Minnesota where my family and I run a fruit farm called Firefly Berries and we specialize in strawberries, Concord grapes, and naturally dyed yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today, whether you are a new viewer Thanks for checking us out. Or you are a long time viewer. Thank you for coming back. Well, it has been a little while since I have come to you with a regular podcast. If you have been following along on the channel during the month of December, you will have seen that I posted daily videos uh, for Vlogmas. And it followed kind of our daily adventures, what we were doing to get ready for the holiday season as well as what I was making. So today, I'm gonna to kinda of highlight a few things that I finished, but if you are really interested in seeing what I was working on during the last month, outside of blankets, which I'm gonna show you today for sure, um, please be sure to go back and check out some of those Vlogmas episodes. I know that I have been watching Vlogmas episodes of other makers that I didn't get a chance to enjoy during December, just, because there were so many, but I just find it's kind of a comforting, cozy way to start the new year. And after Christmas, New Year's, I always feel kind of, I don't know what the word is, meh. I feel kind of down because there's not too much to look forward to. And here in Minnesota, we have cold winter for at least probably four more months before we even start to feel a tinge of spring. So it gets, can be kind of a downer. So be sure to go back and not only check out my Vlogmas episodes, but other makers as well. So to start today though, let me tell you what I am wearing. I'm kind of wearing a hodgepodge of items today. I had on a cowl previously before I started recording too, but I got kind of warm. But I am wearing two things today. I'm wearing the rugged coat. Let me stand up, I'm kind of close to the video, so it's kind of hard to see. But it is, a coat uh, patterned by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I have made it in a non-superwash worsted by Northern Bee Studios, which is out of Northern Wisconsin, I believe. And then underneath, I am wearing the lounging, let me take this off so I can show you, the lounging tee, which is also by Hohi Locatelli. It has a little lower hem in the back. And this I made out of uh, Madeline Tosh, I think it was Tosh Merino Light, and then I held some of my Very Fun Yarns Mohair Double with it, just because I wanted a little bit thicker gauge than I was getting with fingering. Um, it is kind of warm, but even in the summer, I can wear just this in the summer with maybe like a camisole underneath, and it's, it's not too hot, even with the mohair on. Uh, granted, I don't live in like a really hot area of the country, but it gets pretty warm here in Minnesota. But if you're going to be in like air conditioning, it's kind of a nice layer to have on. So anyway, it's kind of cool out today. Not super cold, not as cold as it was in December when we had, you know, minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit wind chills. But it is, I think, in the 20s Fahrenheit. So it's, yeah, it's a nice cozy um, thing to wear kind of layered over a long sleeve t-shirt with another sweater on top. So yes, that's what I am wearing today. As far as finished objects to share with you, I do not have a ton here in person to share with you because I did gift a lot of things during the month of December. So uh, one thing that I, I guess I have the yarn to show you. So I'm going to pop in a few pictures. I'm going to go through these real quick. But if you are interested in more details, again, you can follow the links below to my project pages on Ravelry, or you can certainly watch the Vlogmas episodes and you will see me working on those during the month of December. But the first one is um, not the first thing that I finished. There's 
needles coming out of the yarn, but it is actually one of the most recent things I finished, and it was a pair of fingerless mittens uh, by the pattern My Go-To Fingerless Gloves by Donna Kimball, and I made it out of this very sparkly purple cashmere yarn. Uh, well, it's got cashmere in it. It's a blend from Sweet Georgia. It is the Sweet Georgia Cashmere Spark. And this is the colorway Anthem. And it is 80% Merino, 10% Cashmere, and 10% Silver Stellina. So very sparkly. I made these fingerless mitts for my oldest, who is in college, and I knew before they went back to school that they would like to have another pair of mitts. So I got those finished. That wasn't a Christmas gift per se, it was just kind of an extra thing that I wanted to get done before the end of the year. Um, other things that I finished before Christmas, since I came to last, were several pairs of the Cloud Slippers by Adrian Sullivan, which I have spoken about ad nauseum before. I love that pattern, love the slippers. I've made so many, and I know I will make many, many more. Um, I gifted three, for sure I knit three pairs since I came to last for each of my older children, my three oldest. They all got a pair. My youngest already had one. They got one each for Christmas. And then um, my youngest for Christmas, I finished a pair of socks for him. Um, I have been working on, if you've been watching my past episodes, you will have seen that I've been working on a sock blank pair of socks. Actually, it's the second pair out of the Essence of Autumn sock blank that I had gotten quite a while ago from the Knit Crate subscription box. And I actually made a second pair and it was so fabulous because I finished the entire skein of yarn. It almost came out perfect for me to have just at the end to have a different contrast color toe. Um, I had divided the skeins into two balls to make it for sure that I had the same for each sock and it was perfect. And so I love it when that happens. No yarn chicken happening, no running out of yarn, not too much yarn, but just the right amount. So those were well received and enjoyed by all. So works in progress, what have I been working on? Well, to be completely honest, since Christmas Eve, once I finished all my gift knits, I have been blanket binging almost 100%. I did to work on a couple pair of socks, which I'm gonna show you here first. But for those of you who have been around, you will recall that we were in the middle of a just a week and a half long blanket binge make along. And so from Christmas Eve to New Year's Day, I focused primarily on blankets. And that was because I have seven blankets on the hooks or needles right now, which I have quickly realized is a little too much. So I always talk about how if you want to cast something on, if you want to have 20 whips, if you want to have three whips, do what makes you happy. And I do agree with that 100%. And sometimes seven whips makes me happy. But other times it makes me feel like I'm breaking out in the hives because I just, it's overwhelming. It's stressful. So that was kind of how I was starting to feel, which is why I tried to focus on blankets. And we have had a fun little discussion on our Discord channel, which if you're interested in joining the Very Fun Yarns Discord channel, the link is below. Um, encouraging each other to finish some blankets or to get started on some blankets that are on our minds, on our needles, on our hooks in the new year. So that has been really fun. And later at the end of the whip section, I will announce who the blanket binge make long winner is. But until I get to that point, let me first get on with my other works in progress, which are my socks. So I have two pairs of socks that have been on the needles for a fair amount of time. One I cast on in October and one I cast on in November. So the October one was my pink Franken socks. And these I cast on um, in honor of it being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the fact that this year I did have to, uh, I did get called back 
in that time, in that end of September, early October, for a um, ultrasound, a ma because my, my mammogram showed something suspicious. Luckily, it was all fine, it was all normal, but I needed something to work on that would kind of make me feel hopeful and inspired, so I cast these babies on. And, of course, I didn't get too far, because as is with all beautiful, shiny yarn, something new and sparkly caught my attention. But I did work on these a fair bit. I think before I was, I wasn't even done with the heel. I was kind of up here in the um, cuff section, the leg section. But I did cast on, you see it's very sparkly. I did not cast on, I did work the heel and then I continued with the decreases for the gusset and now I am finally just knitting around on these socks. And I am using a unidentified, I kind of think it might be Desert Vista Dye Works, but I'm not sure. I got it from a friend. It is a stripy, sparkly skein. It was um, it was about a half of a skein, half of fifth, bleh, half of a 100 gram skein that she had used for something else, and she was trying to get rid of her extras. But um, I decided it was too pretty just to put in my blanket, and I wanted it in some socks. So I paired that with some leftover lavender loon sparkle. This is the Candy Cane Forest colorway from 2018 or 19? No, I think it was 2018. Um, and I have a Musselboro hat that is currently missing somewhere in the house that is made out of that. So I hope I find that soon. But I made, I used that on the cuff. And then my heel, I used Fangirl Fibers. And which I believe she is, I don't know if she's rebranded it or how that works exactly, I haven't stayed up to date on it, but I believe it's Keenan Hand Dye now. So yeah, so I am working on these and I really love these socks. And I was realizing as I was looking through my socks over the last couple weeks, um, when I was washing them and putting things away, that I really have a couple of pair of socks that I made a long time ago, way back when I first started knitting when I didn't really know like what my favorite heel was or my favorite number of stitches to knit. And they're really not my favorite. And I don't wear them hardly ever. So they need to be replaced. And I would say there are probably three for sure that need to be replaced. And I do not have, you know, some people have you know, they're very prolific with their sock knitting and they can have 30, 40, or even more pairs of socks for themselves. I probably have 10 or 12, counting those three that I don't love, and then maybe two or three other, what I would call Christmas socks that I wear kind of around the Christmas season. Um, however, I did gift my husband one of those pairs of socks because the, it was a scrappy Christmas pair of socks. If you watch Vlogmas, you will see him wearing them. Uh, but they're just kind of big on my feet. Like I said, the more you knit things, particular items, like in this case socks, you really learn what feels good on your feet. And you can kind of be a, I don't know, a sock snob in the sense that you only want the things that feel the best. So those were made with 64 stitches around and I use a size zero needle, but I have very narrow feet and because they were knit with some thicker fingering weight yarn, they're a little bit wider around than it's really comfortable. So I've learned over the, just the last year or so that I really prefer, if I'm gonna make a vanilla sock that's just stocking net, I really prefer 60 stitches for myself and then 64 for my rest of my family. They have a little bit wider feet. So yeah, so I got rid of those. So I need to make some more socks for myself. So really hoping to finish these in the coming weeks or so. I am hoping to put out another video after this one about my 2022 makes and then what I'm planning for 2023. And I will talk more in there about what I'm kind of envisioning for how many pairs of socks I want to get done, that sort of thing. But these definitely, I'm stoned for sock, but 
I am enjoying them as something different in between blankets. And then the other pair that I'm working on is my gingerbread house socks. And this yarn is by Jude of Stranded Dye Works. And it is called Gingerbread House. It's a beautiful variegate. And the heel and little pop at the top and probably the toe at the bottom will be out of Lavender Loon Truffle Shuffle. And I am doing a broken rib of sorts. It is, um, I do knit three, purl two, because again, I can't, well, I could do knit two, purl two, but for some reason, I really prefer the knit three, purl one or purl two. For some reason, I feel like it really hugs the ribbing hugs my leg a little bit better. So this one, because I'm 60 stitches, I have to do increments of five instead of four. So I did knit three, purl two for my cuff, and then I continued on, and I would do two stocking net rows, and then two rows of knit three, purl two. So it's a, a broken rib of sorts. Yeah, and I was up here at this little stitch marker since I came to last and I have done the heel and then all the way down, probably about half of the foot. I probably have a couple inches to go before I do my toe and then bind off. So yeah, so I'm liking these a lot too. And you know, sometimes Christmas comes and if you haven't finished your Christmas socks, I don't know if any of you are in this boat, you feel like, oh, I don't really wanna finish those Christmas socks because it's not Christmas anymore. I want to make Valentine socks or spring socks or general winter socks or whatever. I purposefully picked this because this particular skein of yarn because it is very universal. It doesn't look overtly Christmas and I will wear these more than just during the Christmas holiday season. So yeah, that is my second pair of socks. I'm kind of chatty today. Hopefully this isn't too long of a video. Oh well. Uh, and it is in my Whimsy Stitches Super Cute Christmas Baking Bag from Rick. Love his bags. And again, I'm not feeling like I'm tired of seeing this bag yet. I still think, I still feel like I can be in the holiday spirit with that. Okay, so on to the blanket binge make-along. What kind of blankets have I been working on? Well, let me see here. Oh, I am missing one. Hold on, I have to go get it. Okay, let's start with what I had on the needles or hook before the Advent season. So, before the Advent season, which one to start with? Let's start with this one. This is my... 18-year-old um, son's graduation blanket. And I have talked about this quite a bit before. Oh, my missing earbuds. Does anybody else do that? Where you like put your earbuds or your glasses or whatever else it is that you use on a regular basis in your knitting bag and then you don't work on that project for a while and you lose them and you think, hmm, where did I put those? Mystery solved. Okay, so this is a temperature blanket of sorts and it is... I'm using the model of the Kibu Summer Blanket, I think it's called. Let's see. The Summer Beach Blanket, mitered square blanket or towel. And it is by Morris and Sons, and it's just a typical miter square blanket for the most part. I'm what I'm using it for mostly is uh, how the how to add each square as I go. That part wasn't quite as intuitive to me. And I liked how this particular pattern was the weight that I was using. And also it gave me some guidance as how to add each, each square on. So what I really need to do right now with this is I need to weave in the ends. I've just, I've finished, whoop. I have finished the first row. So before I think I was only I think I've done one, two, three, four, five. I've done at least six or seven um, squares since I came to you last. I added in a new color. 
So as it being a temperature blanket, what I'm doing is every day for the first year of his life, I have written down the temperature it was that day, the high of the day. And then I have picked colors that he likes. So blues, grays, that sort of thing. And I have assigned each color a number of degrees. So for instance, 35 to 30 to 41 degrees is maybe uh, dove heather or cobblestone heather. This one is cobblestone heather. This is the Wool of the Andes Nitpick Worsted uh, Superwash yarn is what I'm making this in. So I have assigned a chunk of temperatures to each color. So then based on the color, or excuse me, based on the temperature, I use that color to make the square for the day. So in essence, each square in this blanket will represent one day of the first year of his life. So I'm hoping it will be uh, probably like a twin size bed blanket. So something he can put on his college bed at college, college bed, his dorm room bed at college. So yeah, so I have finished the first row and I just started the second row. And I will have to say that I was not really called, the, the yarn, the project was not calling me to knit on it until just a couple days ago when I sat down in a chair and a cat came and sat on my lap. And those of you who have pets will probably understand this. The cat sat on my lap and then I was like, well, I can't move. What can I do? I had my iPad, so I was watching a video and this project was the one that was in reach. And so I pulled it out and I started knitting on it. And I was really enjoying it. Um, the bummer thing is that, you know, colors don't always change rapidly when you're doing a temperature blanket. So especially in Minnesota, you get to a certain time of the year. And he was born in November. So November, December, it feels like they're all kind of, you know, cold. And they're kind of the same color for a while and then they'll slowly start to progress. So it was feeling kind of boring for a while because I was knitting gray and blue, gray and blue. And then finally I got into, it's still gray, but it's a different type of gray. So that made it a little more fun. So yeah, that's a lot of rambling about one little project, but that is going well. And I think that I will be motivated to work on this a little bit more now that I have made some progress on it and I can see that it is starting to look a little bit more like what the finished project product will look like. I can see, I can get, I'm feeling some momentum, which is half the battle when you're working on a very large product or project like a blanket. Okay, so that was the first one. The other one that I had cast on before was my cozy garter stitch blanket. Now this blanket, I had cast on, I think in August, and I had hopes that it would be done for Christmas to give as a gift. Of course, it didn't happen. I realized it wasn't going to happen long before Christmas and purchased uh, this particular recipient something else. Um, but I still have hopes. I want to give this project to them, but I will save it for next year. So there's a tip for you start large projects early in the year because if you are a multiple project knitter regardless of how much time you have my opinion on the matter is you will find a different project to work on if you are supposed to be working on a particular one so no matter what something is always shinier if it becomes a have to so here's what happened with this one. I picked this up um, shortly after Christmas. Um, we were back from our travels already to Wisconsin. and But I looked at it. Oh, I know what was happening. I was reviewing at the end of the year. I'll talk more about this on my next episode. But at the end of the year, the beginning of the year, I like to take a good look at what I have left on the needles. What sort of projects I have that I haven't worked on, that haven't been finished, is there anything languishing? And then I like to ask myself, self, why are you not working on this project? And so, you know, sometimes the answer is, oh, I just, I love that project, but this one I love too. And I just had to choose, 
right? But other times, you find there's a reason. Maybe it's the needles that you really don't like. Maybe it's the yarn texture you don't like. Maybe it's the color. Maybe it's the pattern. Maybe it's the combination of the pattern and the color, right? There's always a reason. For me, the reason I realized that I was not working on this is because the colors were not changing enough. So this blanket is modified after the Cozy Comfort Throw by Molly of a Homespun House. I modified the stitch count slightly and I'm not doing the I-cord edging, but um, Ma she uses mini skeins held double with another skein that's a another color that stays the same throughout. So you have this marled effect where you have one solid color and then you have the changing mini skeins. Well, I realized during the month of December when I was working on my advents and opening up all those mini skeins, I love to work with mini skeins. And that is because you don't knit on it or crochet on it for very long and then you get a new pretty color. So I love the colors as much as how the yarn feels when I make something. As makers, I think the longer we make, the more we learn about ourselves and what makes us happy and brings us joy. So realizing this, I went and took a closer look at what I had picked out for colors for this project. And I had picked out four 100 gram skeins of a contrast color, different colors, but in the same family. And then four of the same color that I was gonna use throughout. And I realized that 100 grams of the same color was not doing it for me. So what I did is I pulled out 20 grams from each of those colors that I had pulled. And then I went into my partial skein stash of fingering yarn, which I have quite a bit, and well as, as well as mini skeins. And I pulled out, I'll show you, a bag of other minis um, that were approximately 20 grams that I thought would go well together. And then I got a little, a little more involved and I put little tape marks on there with the number of which order I'd like them to go in. So here is what I have. Oh, I also need to pull out, I have these on interchangeable needles from Knit Picks, but I haven't done the little tightening thing, and so they're kind of, they keep getting loose. I need to pull out my tightening thing. So look how much I've done. Isn't that looking nice? I've done so much. Let me see where my, oh here. The back side, you'll see where I left off. You can, can you see the little, oh yeah, there it is, the little stitch marker. Now what I did decide to do, because I already had half of a skein, almost exactly, of the first color done. I had done 50 grams. I decided to save that other 50 grams, and at the very end of my blanket, when I have 50 grams left of my uh, solid color that I'm holding double, I'm going to do that last chunk at the end. So there'll be a larger chunk at the beginning and a larger chunk at the end, so it'll kind of make it more cohesive. And then I just used other colors. So, you know, as I was I was going along and I was like looking at it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have put that purple in there. Because you know, sometimes you pull out colors like I did and you number them in an order you think it will look good. And then you get them mixed with a, another color. So you start to marl it and it changes the color completely. So for instance, there was this color here that when I had it by itself, it, I really sensed a purple undertone to it. And I thought it would look really nice after this one. But then when I marled it with the uh, tanny brown color of barley, it really shone out as more blue than purple. So I kind of doubted myself for a little bit, but I kept going because in the grander scheme of things, this is gonna look really beautiful. And I do have other purples picked out that will bring this color back in as I get through the blanket. But yeah, really enjoying this blanket. And I'm sure I will, I'll probably finish it this year. 
Okay, so that is the cozy garter blanket. So I have two blankets left, and both of these blankets were made with the Advent countdown kits, or one of them in this case was a winter solstice countdown kit that I was opening during the month of December. And the first one is my Berry Fun Yarns countdown. And I have made fabulous progress on this because just this morning, in fact, let me use my scissors so I can finish it off. Just this morning, I finished color 25, and now I'm going to do an edging around it. But I had to kind of pause on this. This one is a granny stripe crochet blanket, and I had to pause a bit on it because I was having some issues with my elbow and tendonitis. I still, you can maybe see I have a brace on underneath my my shirt but yeah so crochet sometimes is really hard on me but I finished this is the last color so let me show you what it looks like it is so it starts at the top up here with day one and then it goes all the way down maybe if I hold it this way you can see it better to day 25 so this kit had 24 mini skeins that were all dyed with indigo of some sort. So I used indigo, either my Saxon Blue indigo liquid that I get, or I did an actual indigo bath with them. So what is interesting about this, for me as a dyer, I wanted to make one complete blanket for myself or project that I could use that had the whole set in it, right? So all I did was I crocheted until I ran out of that color and then I started the next one. And you can see a couple of the colors I have larger um, chunks of and that is just because for whatever reason um, sometimes I had a skein that was a little bit under so I would keep that one for myself and then sometimes the skein would be really over. And that, that is because I had my oldest uh, wind mini skeins for me this year in the summer because I was having a hard time getting in mini skeins already wound so I'd get a cone in and he would wind them for me but um, yeah sometimes it wasn't always the greatest but luckily there were only a few of those mini skeins that I couldn't use for customers so yeah so that is my blanket and this is just kind of a throw blanket for myself, something to cozy up with before I go to bed. And I plan on using um, as my border. So, oh, so this color, I should tell you, this color here, the 25th color, actually was a full skein color. And I'm gonna talk more about that in the dye pots because I do have some of these skeins available that by the time this goes up, I will have them in my shop. If you're interested in that full skein, I will have some sock sets as well as regular um, fingering weight skeins. So anyway, I decided I was gonna put the 25th color in here, and then my youngest, at one time, we dyed some yarn together with Kool-Aid, and this is the skein he dyed got a lot of white in it, but it also has a lot of color in it. So I am going to use that as my edging. Um, and originally I was going to do a, so I should say this pattern is uh, modified from the Granny Stripe Blanket of Lucy of Attic 24. That's where I got it from. And I just modify that to fit whatever size I want uh, width wise and I just keep going until it's the length I want, or in this case, until I ran out of mini skeins. Uh, but I originally was gonna do some sort of crocheted edging, but I think because crochet is bothering my um, my wrist, and uh, my wrist, my elbow and my tendon so much that I'm going to do an I-cord edging. So I will be starting that probably tonight yet because I really want to have my blanket finished. So I'll be using this to do the edging and I'm not sure if I'm going to hold this double or if I'm going to just do it single. It is a lighter weight fingering, I'd say. It's a light fingering. It's like 450-ish yards. Let me see. It wasn't a skein. Four, well, I guess it's not that much. 415 yards. It was a skein I got, again, in my knit crate box. 
they did a month where it was like they sent you Kool-Aid and instructions and then you dyed your own yarn with the supplies they sent you. So yeah, so that is definitely on the books for plans. Hope to get that done soon. And then the last blanket that I cast on is actually based on a cowl blanket, which was written by Kay of the Bakery Bears, and it is called the Pixie Dust Cowl. It is actually a patron-only pattern, and I do not have a good picture of it, so I'm just gonna show you my blanket. It is a patron-only pattern. Um, I am a Bakery Bears patron on their Patreon account, and I really enjoyed the content they put out and wanted to support them in that way. So what I did is I took the, it's a chevron pattern of sorts, I took that pattern, I opened it up. So if you think of a cowl, you knit it in the round. So I figured out what I would have to do to modify it to make it be the same pattern but flat, knitting it flat. So in this case, um, there were a couple rows that I had to purl instead of knit or knit instead of purl so that the pattern would still remain the same when it was flat. But so you can see, this is my Lavender Loon countdown. And of course, I am in the middle of a row, of course, as is the case. So I'm just going to fold it in half and show you. But Lavender Loon started down here with day one, and then it's kind of progressing up here. I really love this blanket, too. It is so beautiful, and I really want to work on this blanket as well. I have found that you know, so many of the projects. I just, I want to work on them all, but there just isn't enough hours in the day. So I have been not struggling, that sounds a little too melodramatic, but really trying to think about how I can maximize the joy of knitting on all of them without overwhelming myself. And again, I'll talk more about that in the next episode about my 2023 plans. But all that to say here, as I wrap up the blanket section and the whips is that the blanket binge, which was intended for just a week and a half, I quickly realized that with seven blankets on the hook or needle that I needed more than just a week and a half. I don't know what I was thinking, how much I thought I could get done in a week and a half, way more than actually happens, but it will morph into what I'm calling the blanket bonanza year which just means that we will continue to encourage each other to make the blankets, to work on our blankets. And what I'm gonna do, if you'd like to join me in this, I would certainly love to have you do that, is I'm going to designate a particular day of the week where I focus on blankets. Now that doesn't mean that I can't work on something else, but I'm gonna try to intentionally focus on blankets on that day of the week. So for me, that's going to be Sunday because most of my blankets are made with scrappy yarn. And I love to knit along with Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady, her scrappy Sunday knit along. So, and also Sunday is the day of the week that I tend to have the most time to knit. So Sunday will be my focus for Blanket Bonanza 2023. And if you are following us or you want to participate, feel free to just continue using the hashtag BFY blanket binge and that will be how I follow you and follow what you're making on Instagram and then also we will continue to chat over on Discord. So um, I do hope to eventually, you know, like if we get enough participation and we have conversation at the end of the year, maybe we'll do something special again with prizes and whatnot. But right now I'm just going to take it one month, one quarter at a time and just I just want us to encourage each other to really make progress on these blankets because I know how much I love to sit underneath a warm cozy wool blanket and them just languishing the projects just languishing on my needles never getting done is not how I'm going to enjoy them. So, blanket bonanza 2023 is a real thing. Okay, so let me quick, I have not, I have not yet pulled the winner name for the prizes for the Blanket Binge Week make-along. 
However, let me show you what that person will be receiving in the mail. Okay, by the power of the magic of recording, I will insert the winner's name below or on the screen right now, and I will give you a little bit of time to contact me to let me know you saw this on the video. And if you um, don't see it and I don't hear from you in another week or so, week or two, I will be sure to connect with you on Instagram or Discord, wherever it was that you posted your blanket pictures. So to qualify for this knit along, you needed to um, work on a blanket or make along, I should say, because you could have crocheted. You, need to, you needed to work on the blanket between December 24th and January 1st, and then you needed to post what you were making either on Instagram with the hashtag BFY Blanket Binge or on the Discord channel under the Blanket Binge chatter section. You need to participate in the chatter. So, all that being said, what I'm sending out to the winner is a skein, actually a sock set, uh, one of the new ones of the new, it is called Happy New Year, and this is day 25 of Very Fun Yarns. This was the colorway, and it is a multi-colored fun colorway with a 20 gram mini and this sock set does happen to be in the sparkle base so with this and then one of these cute felted sheep bags that I purchased at ZK in June of this year and then a sweet little stitch marker set made by me so it's kind of got some fun colors that are similar to the colors in the yarn. So yeah, so that will be heading out to you if you saw your name on the screen. Um, I will just need to know your address and where to send that to. So thank you to everyone who participated in that and I look forward to making lots of blankets with you all again more in 2023. That's a perfect segue for us to go into the dye pots because of this sock set that I just showed you that is going to be sent out to our blanket binge winner is also going to be available in the shop online um, at the same time as this goes live, this video goes live, I'll make sure that these are listed in the shop. So I will have sock sets that are on the sparkle base with the 20 gram mini as well as the 80-20 fingering base that's just the skein. And I think I also just have some skeins of the um, sparkle base without the added mini. have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure I do. So these will make super fun socks, or you could put them in a project of other, another kind of project. You could pair it with a solid like this if you had another skein to go with it. Or this, this colorway has so many colors in it that it really would go with a lot of different um, things. So yeah, so those sets will be available in the shop uh, starting when this video goes live. So if you're seeing this, they should be in the shop and the link of course will be below. Um, if you want to make sure as far as very fun yarns, oh, one more thing to tell you before I move on, is that um, some, some of you may have noticed that the name of this channel has changed. It used to be Firefly Berries and Very Fun Yarns. When I first started the channel, it started out more as a uh, opportunity. It started during 2020, during COVID. It was a way for me to reach out to our farm customers to show them what was going on at the farm, about the fruit and pruning and things like that. And although I will occasionally still post some of those videos, I'm finding that I really enjoy the dyeing and the yarn content making that way more and there's a lot more opportunity for me to make that than there is uh, farm videos and vlogs so i kind of decided that this channel would be my uh, more focused on the berry fun yarns product line of our farm as well as you know making videos about what i'm making and um, there will be occasional farm videos like i said but the primary focus will be on the the yarn line of what we offer here at the farm. So 
That is why you saw the change there in the name, but it's still going to be the same as far as, you know, you'll get to see more of what I have been working on in the last few months. Similar content will be coming to you. But it's just really where my heart is. Although I like to grow fruit and vegetables, um, the my heart is really more in love with fiber and yarn and that part of the business. So if you're local and you love our fruit, don't worry, that's not going away. It's just that more of my time will be spent on the yarn and a little less on the fruit. So that is one change you will see. And then if you are interested in the Berry Fun Yarns products and you want to stay up to date on that, the best way to do that outside of these videos would be to be sure to subscribe to my Berry Fun Yarns newsletter and there is a link below under all the videos of where you can do that online and I send out emails maybe once a month or so with new information that's happening, maybe new products. Um, those people on my list get special exclusive sales sometimes or coupons to use but that is the best way to stay up to date with what I am dyeing and what's in the dye pots outside of these videos. And then the last thing I wanted to share in the dye pots before I wrap this up because I am very chatty today. It says I'm at 51 minutes. I know that's quite not quite as long as I am because I go in and out and I cut things, but I wanted to share with you some of the uh, local alpaca yarn that I purchased during the month of December from a farmer who is no longer has alpacas and wanted to sell some of the inventory she had left. And it is an unusual, I feel like it's sort of an unusual alpaca yarn and how it is spun. It's a tad bit heavier than the alpaca I'm used to. However, it's also very, it feels very silky and very drapey. And I know the heavier a yarn is, it tends to be a little drapier. You know, as is true fashion with alpaca, it's not a very elastic or stretchy kind of yarn. So if you're thinking about making something with 100% alpaca, generally you want to make something, I wouldn't necessarily make socks um, or, you know, like a sweater, unless you're, blend, you're making it with another type of yarn, just because it has, it doesn't really have memory in the same way that wool does, that sheep's wool does. It doesn't bounce back as well, but it has a beautiful drape and that this is um, some of the worsted that I will have in the shop. I haven't dyed it yet, of course. I'm still working on that. And then this is a little bit of the, this one was coming out to be about sport weight. So these will be unique, one of a kind skeins that I am prepping right now I am re-skeining them to get them ready for how I dye them and how I like to have them skeined up. Um, I'm also, you know, doing a more accurate count of the exact yardages of each skein. So when I buy yarn from my wholesaler, all of my skeins are the same weight. They're all the same grams or generally all the same yards. But these are really going to be unique in that, you know, some of them may have a hundred and... 60 grams on them and some of them may have 200 and some of them may have 100 so they'll all be very unique in that way because they were milled in a small small mill and they were also they're each like I have three or four skeins of this particular animal whose name was Sonic Boom or this one whose name was Kiwi so they're all going to be labeled as such so that if you're really interested in trying out some 100% alpaca. Now note it is not brushed alpaca like we see brushed Surrey alpaca often in the knitting and making industry. It is just spun as a alpaca yarn. So anyway that's a lot of rambling. If you have any questions about any of those things that I mentioned in today's video check the description box below and if you still don't see your answer, please be sure to leave a comment or a message. And if you just want to leave a comment or a message, that's fabulous too. I love to chat with you. And of course, don't forget to click the thumbs up button or to subscribe if you haven't done that already. I really am getting close to 500 subscribers, so would love to reach that number. 
and just to have you all as a part of the community, either here or on the Discord channel or both. So thanks again. I hope you're having a great week wherever you are, and I will come to you again soon. Bye, everybody.